Imagine the universe as a gigantic, elastic balloon that's steadily being inflated. That's what dark energy seems to be doing, forcing galaxies further apart. Could this force lead to the end of the universe? Some scientists do think so, and they've named this potential event the Big Rip. It's challenging to study dark energy, even though it's one of the most fascinating aspects of our cosmos. That's because its only visible effect is this gentle stretching of space. On any smaller scale, it's virtually undetectable. Compared to dark energy, studying dark matter feels like a walk in the park. Even though it's just as invisible, dark matter leaves clear evidence of its existence. It latches onto galaxies and galaxy clusters, bending light and altering gravity. Dark energy, on the flip side, just expands. Nonetheless, scientists have found ways to examine it, mostly by observing the universe's expansion. As we peer into the distance, we are, in fact, peering back in time, tracing the universe's evolution. Dark energy could also bring about the end of the universe in a massive, catastrophic event. Imagine watching helplessly as reality itself tears apart with no hope of escape. Frighteningly, it's not some far-fetched scenario. The available data does not eliminate the possibility of a big rip. Is dark energy a force that keeps inflating the universe? Or is it more like a separator? If two galaxies are far away from each other, they're driven further apart, leading to increasing cosmic isolation. But anything that's already a strong structure stays intact, immune to this divisive force. Why doesn't it mess things up, you ask? Well, it's because dark energy remains consistent. As space grows bigger, the density of dark energy remains steady. Imagine drawing a circle anywhere in space, taking note of the amount of dark energy there. Do it again after a billion years, and guess what? The amount of dark energy inside your circle won't change, even though space itself has expanded. That is, unless, of course, dark energy has a trick up its sleeve and proves to be more potent than a cosmological constant. All we know for sure is that it's something that drives the universe to expand more rapidly. Or, to put it another way, it creates negative pressure. Now, negative pressure might sound odd. Pressure is usually seen as an outward force, right? But in the universe, it behaves differently. Pressure is a type of energy, like mass, that attracts rather than repels. All these calculations are what makes the Big Rip picture a slow, unraveling movie. The first objects affected are the most massive, loosely bound structures, like giant clusters of galaxies. Their gravitational pull will start weakening, causing them to drift away into the growing cosmic voids. Next, we'd notice stars on the outskirts of our galaxy not following their usual paths, but instead drifting away, like party guests saying their goodbyes. The night sky would then start to dim as our Milky Way would gradually evaporate. The disaster would just accelerate from there. The orbits of the planet would begin to shift, spiraling outward. Just months before the end, after we've lost the outer planets, Earth would drift away from the Sun and the Moon from Earth. We would plunge into the darkness alone. The stillness of solitude won't last, however, any remaining structure would be destroyed because of the expanding space. The Earth's atmosphere would start to thin. Gravitational shifts would cause chaotic tectonic movements. In the final hours, Earth would fall apart. Beyond this point, the destruction would continue unseen. Nuclei, the ultra-dense cores within atoms, would disintegrate next. Black holes' dense cores would get obliterated. In the last instance, space itself would just rip apart. Bad as it may sound, we may never rule out the threat of a big rip. However, it might take so long that all cosmic structures will have decayed before it happens. A rough calculation suggests the earliest big rip could be in about 200 billion years. Technically, the Sun still has about 5 billion years before it fades away naturally. So by the time this event might happen, our solar system would have long been gone. Nonetheless, Given the possible implications, scientists are placing a high priority on understanding the Big Rip. Let's be optimistic, though. I mean, if we look at the universe's history, we should consider ourselves lucky. We're in what cosmologists refer to as the Luminiferous Era. 
It means that right now, the universe is still pretty busy producing new stars, and we know how important these celestial bodies are for maintaining life as we know it. However, the golden age of star formation was about 10 billion years ago. Ever since that peak, the rate of creating new stars has been on the decline. Now, why is the universe taking this early retirement? It's not because it's lazy or tired. In fact, it's exactly because we're living in this expanding universe. For a new star to appear, a bunch of matter needs to be squeezed into a relatively small space. It's like trying to stuff all your clothes into a very, very small suitcase. As the universe expands, the matter is getting spread out, leading to less and less room in that suitcase for creating new stars. The Big Freeze Another theory related to the end of the universe looks at this scenario. Stars will become endangered and then extinct species. This period of star decline is what astronomers like to call the degenerate era. It's estimated to start about 100 trillion years into the future. What will be left in the night sky at that point? Only the hardened workers of the universe, white dwarfs, neutron stars, and black holes. White dwarfs and neutron stars, the remnants of medium and large stars that have exhausted their nuclear fuel, will eventually cool off and transform into black dwarfs. These black dwarfs are like invisible cosmic spirits, just hanging around without doing much, inert and unseen. Other neutron stars, too heavy for their own good, will stumble under their weight and collapse into black holes. Further into the future, the universe will become a black holes only party. But even these cosmic weirdos can't cheat time forever. Black holes can fade away too. In fact, this idea of fading black holes came from a brilliant mind you might have heard of, Stephen Hawking. He suggested that black holes slowly shed energy in the form of radiation until they shrivel up like raisins and evaporate completely. Eventually, every single black hole will have evaporated will be left with a universe in its twilight years, settling into its final age, aptly named the Dark Era. At this point, both light and matter will be nothing but distant memories. And then, well, nothing. If this big freeze theory is correct, the universe will just remain in a quiet, dark state, stretching into an eternity where nothing else ever happens. Most of these theories seem to rely on the fact that the universe is expanding. But what exactly is it expanding into? We can't help but wonder if there's something else beyond our universe. Right now, this question is one for which physics doesn't quite have an answer for. We don't have enough facts. One suggestion is that time and space came to be with the Big Bang. That happened around 14 billion years ago. So logically, there's nothing beyond the universe. However, a huge chunk of the universe is way out of our sight existing beyond the part we can observe, which is about 90 billion light years in diameter. Because everything's pretty much the same wherever you look in the universe, we can presume that the bits we can't see would look pretty much like the parts we can. But that's just an assumption. Now, if the universe is infinite, there's nothing beyond it, right? I mean, that's just what infinite means. On the other hand, if it's finite and growing, you'd start to wonder if there's a boundary or an edge like a universal cliff that separates our universe from whatever is beyond it. It gets even more complicated when you realize the universe has at least four dimensions, three for space and one for time. And it's pretty much impossible for us to picture what that might look like. <laughs>